I believe in miracles because I believe in God. You are responsible before God for today. God wants to show His power and His greatness in our lives. Welcome, friends. So glad you can be with us today on the Ernest Angley Hour. Today, we have a ministry classic for you, and it's Reverend Angley's Crusade from the Philippines. Baguio City in the mountains. What a mighty time in the Lord this was. People being saved, healed, and delivered. I know you will be greatly blessed. We're so privileged today that uh, Reverend Angley, he is here today in our, in our beautiful city, Baguio. And uh, I'd like to present him to you right now. All the way, halfway around the world, I'm sure you're all anxious to see him in person, Reverend Ernest Angley. Let's give him a welcome clap. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. And this place is packed and jammed and understand there's people outside that can't get in. And this is one stormy evening, too. So I know you mean business being here this evening and a storm raging like it's raging outside. But just as the rain and the wind is blowing outside, the wind of Pentecost is going to be blowing on the inside, and the latter rain of the Spirit's going to be pouring down. And so many, many are going away with armfuls on purpose. The subject for this evening is because he promised. Because he promised. You will find one great, great, mighty promise in the book of Genesis, in the ninth chapter of Genesis, beginning with verse 11. God is talking to Noah, Noah, and he's saying, I will establish my covenant with you. Neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of the flood, neither shall there any more be a flood to destroy the earth. Then the Lord goes on to tell him that he will put a bow in the sky, and this rainbow will appear after each great storm or rain, that it is a covenant promise that God will never destroy the earth again with water, the inhabitants of the earth with water. That promise God has kept all these thousands of years. Now, because of God's promises, I am here telling you this evening that God will move for you, that God will save your unsaved, that the Lord will heal your sick bodies, that the Lord will perform miracles. Why? because he has promised. He began making promises to man when he found one man that would love him and believe in him. You must believe in God, nothing doubting, not let your faith waver to be covered by his promises. There are thousands of promises in the Word of God, and all of those good promises belong to each child of God. God had made man and had given him everything, but man sold it to the devil for a very cheap price. God was going to destroy all the inhabitants of the earth, maybe would have started over, but he found one man. Noah found grace in the eyes of God, and that's the man that God made this fantastic promise to. Now, if God loved Noah that much, and that was before the Son of God died for us, how much more so will the Lord keep His promises to us? Now, some people, they do not count the promises of God being anything great and mighty, but I count the promises of God in the Holy Scriptures more valuable than all the silver and the gold in the whole universe. I love the promises of God. I have no trouble believing this Bible. I know that it is the infallible word of the living God. And I know with the Lord all things are possible. And I was on a talk show, a famous talk show in America one time, and a man that was supposed to be quite an intellectual was on with me. 
And he said that this Bible was just a guideline. I said, not so. Not so. It's not a guideline. It's the infallible word of the living God. God has said it, and we must accept it. God has said it, and God will confirm it. The God of miracles lives tonight. Not just yesterday. He is alive, and he will keep his promises to you and to you and to you. The reason many people have never received much from God and the reason so many people in the world doubt the Lord is because there hasn't been enough believing children of God on planet Earth. You who believe the Lord, you have got to reach out for armfuls on purpose each day to be served by the Lord, to be served with his wisdom, his knowledge, his love, his healing, his happiness, his peace, because you can only serve what the Lord gives you to serve. I tell my team this again and again. We can only serve the people what the Lord gives us to serve. And we must reach out and take all of Jesus that we might serve him to the people who come to our services. We want you to go away not talking about Ernest Angley, not talking about team members, but go. I want you to go away from this service saying, uh, Jesus sure was there. Jesus was there each moment, and his power was demonstrated every moment of the service, and his love covered the whole place. I don't care how much of his love you had before this service. I want you to take more of him home with you than you've ever had before. More and more of Jesus in this final hour. More and more believing him for all to be fulfilled. God has made staggering promises. Wasn't that a staggering promise that he made to Noah? Noah would have lived in fear, terrible fear. Every time there formed a cloud in the skies, he said, we're going to be destroyed, children. I just know there's going to be another flood and we don't have an ark. We have nothing to save us, but because he believed God, he could say to his children, to his grandchildren, uh, no, no, there isn't going to be a flood. Yes, see, God promised. We live with the promises of God. The reason so many people are so depressed, the reason so many people are not receiving what, they sh what God wants them to have today, they are not believing God. They are not accepting his promises. They are afraid there's great fear upon the hearts of the people in America, in your country, I'm sure in other countries, in all countries throughout the whole earth. They're afraid of what's coming upon the earth. Doesn't scare me a bit. I have the promises of God. I know I'm going to be all right. I know the Lord God is my refuge. I know that he's my fortress. I know he's my high tower. I know he's my shield of faith, and I know I'll be all right. What about you? Do you know you're going to be all right? Are you afraid of tomorrow? Are you wondering about tomorrow? Are you scared of tomorrow? Are you fearful of what's coming up on planet Earth? Nation rising against nation, kingdom against kingdom. The Bible tells all. The Lord said it would be like it is today in the hour of his coming. And we know it's going to happen. We know it's going to take place. God made a staggering promise with Abraham and kept that promise. He made a staggering promise with Moses and kept that promise. He made great promises to the prophets, major and minor prophets, and he kept them thus far and will fulfill the rest of them in due season. Promises that he made over 2,500 years ago are now being fulfilled before our very eyes. Remember in Ezekiel's writing, the prophet Ezekiel was told by God that the Jews would be scattered among all nations, but God would gather them together from all nations and make a great nation out of them, and God has done it in our day. Then the Lord also told Ezekiel about the battle of Armageddon and that Russia would go down on Israel and it would be a ferocious battle. 
seven months to bear the dead and seven years to clean up the battlefield. It's coming. It's coming. The nations are getting ready for Armageddon. But because of the promise of God of the soon coming of the Lord that we're going to escape, we're looking for the rapture to take place. While the Bible tells us we'll not all sleep, but we'll be changed in a moment and a twinkle of an eye, call away to be the Lord forever. Isn't that a beautiful promise? Why should we worry? Why should we be afraid of Daniel's 70th week? We're not going to be here. I know some preachers and some teachers of prophet, Bible prophecy are telling us we'll have to go through a part of the tribulation period, a half of the tribulation period. Not so. The Lord promised to keep us from that hour of temptation. And why should we be here for the Jewish dispensation anyway? When the Gentile dispensation goes out, why would the Lord leave us here? No, Jesus is coming and I'm getting ready to go and trying to get everybody ready that I can. If you're not ready, I'm after you tonight telling you you can get ready. The promises of God are to you. There's the great promise of salvation. The Bible tells us if you repent of your sins, the Lord is faithful and just and will forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Now, some people think you can't be born again. They think you just shake the preacher's hand, baptized in water. Why, you just go in a dry center and come out a wet one. Don't you know that? We believe in water baptism, but it won't wash your sins away. If water would wash sins away, Jesus would never have come. It takes the blood that stained the old rugged cross to wash away your sins. And without the shedding of blood, there's no remission for sins. And there's no other name under heaven given among men whereby we can be saved. But because of that name, there's salvation for all. Because of that name, there's life for all. Because he promised every man, every woman, every boy, and every girl can be born of the Spirit of God tonight. And if you're not born of the Spirit of God, I invite you to Calvary tonight. Come as you are. He will forgive you no matter what you've ever done. He will wash away all of your sins and make you a new creation in Christ Jesus because he promised. Because he promised. Man has appeared on the scene with his theories and with the, the traditions of the fathers for years. But here's the word. Here's the promises. Here's the promises of God that dethrones all of those theories, dispels all the darkness, makes a plain path because he promised. Because he promised you can be holy as he is holy. Because he promised you can live a holy, righteous life, live a godly life, holy life, right here in this present world. And you must do it if you're going to live in God's heaven. Because he promised... We know there's life after death. And we know that death is not the end of the road. No, it's just the real beginning for every child of God. And we know there's a heaven just like we know that this city is here, that Baguio is here tonight, and we're here having this service. We know there's a place called heaven, and it's real, and real people are living in it because some of us have loved ones that's gone on before us and they're living up there. How do you know, preacher? Because God promised. God promised. He said, in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you, and I will come again. I will come again. I will come again. Do you believe that? You really believe he's coming again? Yes, it was hard when Jesus was here on earth for the, church, the disciples that followed him to believe for all. They watched his miracles, but they had a lot of unbelief. It took an upper room experience. It took the baptism of the Holy Spirit to bring them to that place that they could believe for all the promises. And he told them that he would send the promise to them. They would be baptized in the Holy Ghost. And so he did send the promise to them. And they were baptized in the Holy Spirit, and then suddenly they could believe. Suddenly they lived in the Spirit, walked in the Spirit. Suddenly they had on the shoes of Jesus. Suddenly they were doing his works. And that's the way it must be today. We must be filled and thrilled and running over with the Holy Spirit, just like the early church disciples. We must do the works of Jesus. And because he has promised, 
These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. In these services, devils are cast out. God's people are supposed to cast out devils. That power's available, and we're supposed to use it. He said these signs will follow the believers, not the doubters, but the believers. And they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall get well. Isn't that wonderful? Now, when I lay hands on you tonight, you go away from here and decide, I'm going to get well. You just start praising God and watch yourself get well. Watch yourself get well. Some of you will be healed right on the spot. Some of you, your, mir your miracle will show up just like that. Then others, it'll be a few hours. Some of you, it'll be a few days. Some, it may be a few weeks, but God promised to get you well. And that power will be working inside of you day and night to get you well if you believe it. But you've got to believe it. We believe in good doctors and good hospitals and good medicines. And I have some wonderful friends that are doctors. And I appreciate them. They believe in what I'm doing. I believe in what they're doing. I believe that all real healing comes from God, that God is the healer, and that he has put so much healing in nature, and he has given man wisdom and knowledge to take it from nature and apply it to the body. Still, that's God's healing. But then above that, in the atonement of Christ Jesus, he went to the whip and post, and with his stripes we have divine healing. In Jesus' name, the sick are healed. In Jesus' name, the blind receive their sight. In Jesus' name, the crippled are made to walk. In Jesus' name, it is done. And there's no case too hard for the Lord because the Lord has promised he will do these things. But all of his promises are conditional. He is not going to heal you for you to go out and serve the devil. Why should he heal you and let you go out and serve the devil in a greater way than what you've been serving him? You've been doing too good a job serving him already if you're serving him. He heals you for you to serve him. He heals sinners. He did when he was here on earth. Healed a sinner man one time and said, Go sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon you. Go sin no more. And sinners, he'll heal you tonight but you got to serve him. I've seen him heal thousands of sinners. He loves sinners. He died for sinners. He must love them. And if he died for them, I know he'll heal them. And so he wants you to go forth and serve the Lord. Live for Jesus. That's the only life that really counts anyway, serving him. And then you can sing that little chorus that we sing every, every promise in the book is mine. Every chapter, every verse, every line. I am living in his love divine. Every promise in the book is mine. Because he promised, we don't have to worry. Because he promised, we don't have to be afraid. Because he promised, we don't have to dread tomorrow or next week or next year. Because he promised we don't have to dread old age. Because he promised we don't have to dread anything that's coming upon the earth. Because he promised to look out for his own. He promised to never leave us nor forsake us. He promised to supply all of our needs. Are you here for him to supply all things needed tonight? Are you going to claim the promises that you need? Embrace them and treasure them more than all the silver and gold in the world? All the material things of the world, will you embrace the promises of God tonight and go forth saying, I have a promise from God. I'm going to be all right. I'm going to get well. I'm not going to die. The doctor said they'd done all I could do. They gave me a week or two weeks to live. But the Lord is going to get me well because he promised. And because he promised, Joy and happiness will be yours as you go away from this service. Because he promised you that are on drugs and alcohol can go away free tonight. Because Jesus said, in my name they shall cast out devils. The Lord has given me a special gift to deliver you alcoholics, to deliver you drug addicts, 
to set you free, and you won't ever crave your habit again. Thousands have been delivered. No flashbacks. Isn't it wonderful? People have come into the, my services, and they tried all kinds of remedies, everything that man had to offer them, and nothing would do any good. And just one injection of God's miracle power went into them and cured them just like that because God promised. God promised, and God keeps His promises. The Bible declares that God is not slack concerning His promises. I use the promises of God to build every bridge I need built. I use the promises of God to reach heaven any time I need heaven's help. And it's so easy when you use the promises of God to reach up and touch heaven for other people. And I'm here this evening to reach up again and again to touch heaven for you and you and you and you. And as I reach up and touch heaven for you, you receive. And you go forth to glorify the Lord. That's what I ask of you. Go forth and be a good witness for the Lord. Go forth and touch other lives that you come in contact with and let them know that Jesus is alive. He is alive and on planet Earth today, and He still keeps His promises. You that have joined us by television, you who are on alcohol, get ready to be set free. So many, many alcoholics have been delivered during the Ernest Angley telecast because it is the Jesus telecast. It is His power. You are on drugs. Get ready to be set free. Put your hand against mine as a point of contact on the television screen and get ready. You have to want to be free. Alcoholic, do you really want to be free? Do you want your life to really be changed? Thou foul, tormenting devils, thou foul spirits that binds those people, thou foul spirits that binds the alcoholic, the drug addict, in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, come out, come out, I say, in Jesus' name to enter that person no more. And now, sinner, lift up those hands and say, Oh God, thanks for delivering me from devil possession. I will never go back to my habit again. I am free. I confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And I confess him to be Lord, Master, and Savior. And I know that there is power in his blood, power to set me free. And I believe that his blood washes away all of my sins, all of my sins, all of my sins. Say, come on in, Jesus. Come on in, Jesus. Come on in. If you mean it, he has come. The Bible declares they, believers, will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. One day the cameras, the television cameras were rolling and the Lord spoke to me and said, lift your hand and tell the sick to put their hand against yours and be healed. The Lord told me it is a form of laying on of hands. And since that time, countless thousands have been healed of all manner of sicknesses and diseases. Crippled people have gotten out of their wheelchairs and walked in the name of the Lord. Retarded children have been set free. Little crippled children have been healed by mommy or daddy agreeing with the man of God. Well, the Lord said, if two would agree on any one thing touching heaven, it shall be done. You may have cancer, and the doctors have given you just a little while to live, but God will heal you now if you will believe with me. Are you ready? But remember, you must serve him. Lord, 
I bring the sick and afflicted to you. You are the healer. I am a believer. I am a witness to your great power. And I declare that you keep your promises. And now lay a healing hand on those retarded children, on those crippled little ones. Heal that mother, that daddy. Heal, heal, heal in the name of the Lord. And oh God, your healing power is flowing flowing into the bodies of the sick and afflicted. Neighbor, be thou made whole. Don't you feel his presence? Don't you feel him now? Don't you feel the strangeness of his presence going all through you? His power will get you well. Call a friend after the telecast and say, the Lord saved me today, or the Lord healed me today. Then write and tell me about it, and I will rejoice with you. Remember, God keeps his promises, and he promised to deliver you. Oh, friend, isn't it amazing to look back and watch how God was revealing himself, making himself living reality to these people in the Philippines. And you know, friend, we're continuing on with the work of God. Reverend Angley, his motto was, win the lost at any cost, and so it is today. We continue to shine the light of the gospel to people everywhere, and we're doing so through a variety of means, television, world radio, the technology of social media, live streaming our services all over the world. Oh, it's wonderful how we're reaching people, even through our Growing in Grace mission program. And friend, you can be a part of it. And I'd like to encourage you to stand with us, support this Jesus ministry as we win souls. And as you do, God will bless you. He promised in his word that he would. And not only will he bless you financially, he'll bless you spiritually, He'll bless you physically. He'll bless you in every part of your life. So donate through our website, ernestangely.org, or you can always send in your support by mail. And those of you watching in Canada, we have a special address for you to send your support to. And if you choose to become a sponsor, a monthly sponsor, well, each month you'll also receive a giant little book. And these are giant, powerful, spiritual messages in a small booklet form. And it's wonderful food to feed your soul. And the July giant little book is entitled, Are You Losing the Battle? This is a powerful message, one that can really bless you. So when you send in your support for the month of July, be sure to request offer P377. And friend, don't forget about the latest edition of the Power of the Holy Ghost magazine. And the theme of this edition is prayer. What a privilege. Also, you'll read testimonies in this edition, how God is helping people, saving them, supplying their needs. And he's doing so through our prayer line. He's doing so through social media, through the live stream of the services in so many different ways. Read about it for free at ernestangely.org. Now, taking you back to the Philippines, and it's time for the healing line. Deaf? Yes, Father. What a beautiful child. She goes to school, she speaks she, a little, but she lost her hearing. She does she not hear. Talk in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I command the eardrums to be created in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, come Jesus. out. Baby, baby, 
changed you're hearing it see she could tell I changed now it's just like learning another language baby 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 amen 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 mm-hmm baby Baby. Baby. Yeah. <laughs> she knew I fooled her a while ago, so she's watching me now. Are you the mother? The auntie. Are you born again? Yes. You love Jesus? Very much. Oh, hallelujah. And I anoint her, oh Lord, to teach this one. Now, what you do, you just stand right in front of her, say the word, and say it in your ear. You've got to teach her sound. You have to teach her sound. She's normal now, but you have to teach her sound just like she was that high. And a darling child. God Amen. love you, honey. I didn't oh. preach the Lord. How about that? And listen to this. <laughs> She's got it. <laughs> Now you can't start in just talking to her like a normal, like she was as old as she is. You have to treat her just like a tiny baby. You have to teach her. Yes, Father. You teach her. She yes. is normal now for a tiny age. Praise the Lord. God bless. The Lord did it. He must have all the honor, the praise, and the glory. The Lord gets the glory, not I. I can't cure you of even a slight headache. Deaf? You. Yes. Deaf and dumb. In the name of Jesus, grant this miracle. In the name of Jesus, come out. You got it. Okay. Praise the Lord. How old is she? Cannot talk, Father. He's deaf and mute. She's how old? When she was still a child, she was overdose of uh, medicine. He's how, how old is he? It's okay. Seventeen? I don't understand. What? How old? What age? I, age. Yeah, what's the age? I do not know. She's only my friend of mine. Just a friend and you don't know. Thou dumb spirit come out. I command the dumb spirit that they have spirits to never come back. Baby. 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 A. A. Man. B. 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 Baby. B. Baby. 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 
Big B. A B. A. A. Man. B. A. A. Man. B. Big B. B B. Big B. B B. Big B. B B. Big B. B B. Love, 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 Jesus, Jesus, us, Jesus, 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 Jesus. I love, love, Jesus. You're getting there. You're learning fast. Fast. And you're going to help her? Yes, sir. Are you born again? Do you smoke? Yes, sir. Where are they? You don't smoke don't anymore. Here. Say, oh God. God. Save my soul. Forgive me, Forgive me of all of my sins. Of all of my sins. I'll never smoke again. I'll never smoke so again. So help me God. So help me God. Heal my body. Heal my body. Say, come in, Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. And I inject God's miracle power into your mind to have understanding to help her get well. Father, I'm also suffering from my half body ache. I don't believe anymore. I believe you'll be fine. We have very many more deaf. A few more. Deaf? Uh, not exactly, Father. Partially deaf. The right ear only. It's about six or seven. Six or seven more. More deaf. No, but I'm wanting to know, you, this child, is it deaf? Uh, the right ear, Father, cannot Just hear. Just the right ear? Yes, Father. Okay. This child's right ear is deaf. Now watch these miracles because this is getting you ready for mass miracles. So you watch, this is something we can check, something you can see. Cancer, sugar, diabetes, and things like that, you have to wait till you go back to your doctor. But these things we can absolutely check. In the name of Jesus, come out. In Jesus' name, say baby. Maybe. Baby. Maybe. A. Hey. Man. Mean. I. Hi. Love. Love. Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you. you <laughs> How about that? Thank you, Father. Is this your child? Yes. Father. How long has she been deaf in that ear? All her life? Almost two years, Father. Because uh -huh. of high fever. And are you born again? Yes, Father. Then I anoint you with God's blessings to teach this child and rear that child in the knowledge and the wisdom of God like my mother reared me. Thank okay? You. Thank you. God bless. You're a sweet darling. Oh. Yes, Deaf? Yes, sir. In the name of Jesus, create yes, the Jesus. eardrums. In the name of Jesus, come out. Keep that back because he's watching that too much. Thou o dumb spirit, in the name of Jesus, come out. I command the dumb spirits, the deaf spirits, to never come back. Look here, hon. Look here. Look here. Baby. 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 Uh-huh. Baby. 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 Uh-huh. Baby. 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 A. A. Men. 
Wonderful. He got his miracle from God. Isn't that wonderful? Oh, that is great. Are you born again? Yes, ma'am. And you don't smoke? I know, sir. You need anything? Yes, I do. Yay! In the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. Hey, me. I go. Loose her completely. Thank you, God. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It's all right, son. He just doesn't look so good now, but it's all right. 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 Gonna have a different mama. Yeah. What about that? Baby? 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 Amen. A? Uh-huh. Amen. Amen. Baby? Baby. Baby? Baby. Baby? Baby? Baby. Amen. 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 Baby. Baby. Amen. Amen. Baby. Baby. All right, Mother. Serve the Lord now. Uh, yes. And rear this sweet little boy in the fear of the Lord. Uh, okay? Yes, and take yes. any healing you need. I yes. saw God move for you. You don't have a sense of smell? In the name of Jesus, come out. I command the sense of smell to come. Did you smell that? In the... I thought so. <laughs> you don't have a sense of smell? Yes. Yay! Come out in the name of Jesus. I command the sense of smell to come. You got it. You don't have a sense of smell? In the name of Jesus, come out. I command the sense of smell to come. You smell that? Yes. You got it. You don't have a sense of smell? In the name of Jesus, come out. I command the sense of smell to come. You smell that? You got it. You don't have a sense of smell? In the name of Jesus, come out. I command the sense of smell to come. You smell that? You got it. You don't have a sense of smell? In the name of Jesus, I command the foul spirit to come out in the name of the Lord. This is it. You smell that? You got it. Oh, friend, it never grows old how God moves for people, giving them miracles and healings. And what the Lord did on yesterday, he's doing today. Only believe, Jesus said, all things are possible to him that believeth. And maybe you're watching today and you've received a miracle, a need supplied, or a blessing through this Jesus ministry. We'd love to hear about it. And if you enjoyed the program, we'd also love to hear about that. So if this Jesus ministry is blessing you in any capacity, well, send us your testimony. Be a witness to others. We'd love to hear that testimony. You can send it by email to testimonies at ernestangely.org. And also, I'd like to invite you, when you have the opportunity, pay us a visit at Grace Cathedral. We always welcome visitors to worship the Lord with us and just be a part of our Grace family. We have three services every weekend, and the Word of God is paramount. We praise and worship the Lord with music and singing. The Word goes forth in preaching, and people giving testimonies of what God has done for their lives. And also, we magnify the Lord during the healing part of the service when people have the opportunity at the end to receive prayer. And God is moving for people. Friend, let Him move for you. If there's a great need in your life, come and expect God to move for you. And you can also follow us on Facebook. Become a subscriber to our YouTube channel. And you can follow the services by way of the live stream through Facebook or through YouTube. Maybe you live far away and it's hard for you to get to our services. Well, 
be a part of the services by way of the live stream. And when you subscribe and hit the notification bell, you will be notified when we post new content on our YouTube channel. And you will also be notified when service is about to start. But you can check out all of our social media content, whether it's Facebook or Instagram. We're continually adding new content all of the time. It's just wonderful spiritual food to bless you any time of the day or night. Well, I hope you enjoy today's program. We look forward to seeing you next week. And friend, always remember, you are special to God. hours so late the signs are all here men's hearts are failing because of their fear dead preachers they fail to deliver the truth a watered down gospel without any fruit but time's running out for those in sin a just reward shall be given to men when the trumpet sounds and jesus arrives the spirit will leave and judgment is nigh before it's too late friend kneel down and pray ask him to forgive you Godly sorrow today, believing in Jesus and His divinity. Give your whole life to Him and let His blood set you free. darkness and sin a reprobate mind has been given to men given over to lust their evil thoughts are a sign that we don't have long we're on borrowed time but you can get ready and be delivered my friend the ark door is open for those who enter in don't wait for the door is shut Ask God for forgiveness So you can go up Before it's too late Friend, kneel down and pray Ask Him to forgive you With godly sorrow today set you free If you yielded your heart to salvation's call Start praising the Lord and give Jesus your all Give Jesus the glory It's a wonderful praise That holy word glory will begin change keep lifting those praises in honor of him until the holy ghost speaks and he enters in as the glories go up he'll take over your tongue it's no longer you the spirit has come before it's too late
Spirit come in. Give your whole life to Him and let His Spirit come in.
Thank you. 